You may continue. So do that to my face. Correct? Yes. <clears throat> now, you said there was a lot of commotion going on uh, at that same time, a lot of people talking. Yes, a little bit of screaming, a little bit, yes, yes, but a lot of pandemonium. Trailers still going? Second Jack asked the answer. No. Trailers are still going? I believe it was too. Noise no. from the trailer? Yes. Now, at some point in time, you had an opportunity, did you not, to speak to law enforcement in this case? That day? Yes. Yes. Okay. And uh, you had an opportunity. You had an opportunity, did you not, <clears throat> to not only speak to a law enforcement officer, but you had an opportunity to write your own statement. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Tell the, the court where it was that you were given this opportunity to sit down and write your own statement. I think the first time we did it was in the movie theater. In the movie theater, that's when you wrote down uh, your statement? Yes. Okay, and, and tell me how that was carried out by law enforcement. Uh, they gave us a piece of paper. They said, would you write down what you, what you think you saw here today or, or you saw? And uh, this was about 10 minutes after they took the body out. So we sat down in the theater. Who was we? Everybody, every, all the people who got the same similar types of piece of paper. Y'all were grouped in a particular area? No, they, they kind of spread out a little bit, but we just sat down and we wrote our statements on those pieces of paper. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what's been marked. May I approach a witness, Your Honor? I'm going to show you what's been marked as defense exhibit number one and ask you if you recognize that exhibit. I do. Is that a fair and accurate exhibit? Uh, of your statement that you gave and signed on January the 13th of 2014. Uh, yeah, I, I signed this. That I did this this day and I did sign it. That's your own handwriting? Yes. Uh, that's your signature? Correct. And uh, there's no bid, there's no, not been any deletions or subtractions from that. That was the exact copy of the original. Correct. Uh, well, I, I'm going to yes. ask you some more yes. questions. Yes. Okay. Your Honor, at this point in time, we'd like to, defense would like to move defense exhibit number one into evidence. Uh, do you have any objections coming in as defense exhibit number one, Mr. Garcia? It's hearsay, Judge. I know that some hearsay is admissible. So that's a yes, you do object? I object, Judge. Based on it being hearsay? Um, it's, it's, it's his own statement. He's already he's admitted it's his statement. I understand what he's saying. exclude this other than it's hearsay? I don't know the relevancy of the judge. He hasn't impeached him with it, so why is it being moved in? I think that's what's coming next. Am I correct in guessing that? Yes, well, he hasn't asked anything, so he's moving it in before the impeachment, so I... All right. Um, lay the foundation that it's going to be appropriate to be impeachment before you move it into evidence. I'll direct that you may show it to the witness now, even though it's not yet been moved into evidence, and you may question him on it. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Cummings, uh, how many lines do we have in your statement that you wrote out uh, on January the 13th, 13th of 2000? About Four five lines. lines. Okay. You certainly did not put in that statement uh, much of what you've talked about here today, correct? Correct. I don't do this every day, so I didn't know exactly to what extent you complete these. Okay. Well, let's, let's so. talk a little bit about that. And I'll hold this here so that the court can see it as well. Now, it starts off by saying, I am writing this Judge statement. Judge the document speaks for itself. Okay. Um, it's a cross in its... <clears throat> is there... Tell me about the impeachment. Is, are you saying there's a prior inconsistent statement with it? No, I'm saying that in this particular uh, version, it is directly opposite 
to much of what he said. Directly, that's directly opposite to what he said? Mm -hmm. Let me say it again. So there's a line of cases on negative impeachment. If the court needs it, I can get it. I, I I'm familiar with a lot of cases on negative impeachment, and at trial that certainly would be something that I would be willing to consider. This is still a bond hearing. There's still no jury. I'll let him impeach with it um, if, if he believes it's impeachment. But don't take liberties with what's written in there. What's written in there is what's written in there. All right, let's go with that. Mr. Cummings, uh, would you please read what you wrote down on January the 13th of 2014? Uh, at the movies, old man went to complain to management about man on the phone. Old man came back alone. He got into an argument with man sitting next to me. Man sitting next to me got up and confronted old man. Old man shot him in the chest. Okay. And how many uh, lines would you say uh, you left completely blank uh, on that uh, statement form? You can, you can count them. Well, there's a, there's a number of things I... Completely blank. Objectives and relevancy, how, Judge. How many... Oh, 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 hold on. Overruled as relevancy. It's a simple question. How many lines are on that? On there, the, there's five lines on here. No, how many lines did, did you fill in? Well, I, I could have written a lot more had I known what I was... I didn't know I needed to complete for this an entire statement that would be appearing here. What I thought was I was giving the, the Sheriff's Department a general view of what happened. Judge, like that. that's, that's, he's not being responsive to my question. How many lines? Judge, I object. He is being responsive to the question. He's trying to answer Mr. Escobar's question. Actually, Mr. Escobar is correct. He didn't answer the question. The question is just how many lines did you leave blank? So how many? How many lines? Oh, how many? Oh, these the actual lines. Excuse right. me. Yes, sir. Sorry. I'm sorry. Right. Not a problem. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. There you go. You want to count that again? It's much more than eight, correct? Object, Judge. Sustained. He gets to go with the answer he wants. No further questions. Okay. Do you have any further questions for this Just witness, please, Mr. Garcia? Mr. Cummings, were you not interviewed by Detective James Garrafy of the Pasco County Sheriff's Office? That day? Yes, sir. Yes. And did you not give him a complete version of everything that you testified to here in court today? Yes. All of your testimony? Yes. In reference to this statement that you gave, what was your understanding of this statement? It's just that we were an eyewitness to a crime. I didn't, and, and, and I didn't know it was to be uh, filled out in great detail, line by line, minute by minute, activity by activity. I did not know that. Okay. And it wasn't explained like that. We were in a movie theater that still had uh, some lighting problems. Um, again, I've never done I've never done one of these before, so I wasn't quite sure exactly what you're supposed to do in total. But had you, I done that, I would have taken a little more time to do it. But you did tell Detective James Garby in total everything that was said here today, and that you yes, testified. It's, it's to. much. It was much easier to talk. Uh, I still had a, a lot of blood on my hands when I wrote this. It was drying at the time. So uh, it, it was uh, still a little traumatic in writing it. Yes, sir. May I have a moment, Judge? You may. I think when you were being cross-examined by Mr. Escobar, you had indicated that at some point in time, Mr. Olson had had enough. Do yes. you remember making that statement? Yes. What did you mean by that? I just think that going, the, the, whatever the conversations were, going back and forth between those two, he probably had, had enough. He didn't want to, didn't want to be Nick, you know, just, he, he wanted to stop it. Um, and I think when the, the, the I'm statement... I'm going to object at this point. I think it's totally speculative what he's testifying about. There's no proper predicate for this opinion. Mm -hmm. Judge, he... Oh, will you open the door to it? You may continue, Mr. Kirsten. But wrap it up. I, I am, Judge. I, I was just 
trying to allow him to finish his, his answer. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Cummings. I, I just felt that the, 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 the give and take and the back and forth, uh, he probably had it. You know, and just, uh, you know I'm, I'm not texting anymore, leave me alone. And I did not see him text anymore from the time that the comment was made. I text my, I'm just texting my two-year-old daughter or something. Uh, I, I did not see any more texts after that. Thank so you, I, Mr. I think, I think it was from something. I, I don't, I, again, I don't know everything, but I did not see any more texts. Thank you, sir. I, I have no further questions. Yeah. Just one to you. Just a couple of questions concerning your interview. You uh, indicated to the prosecution that you were questioned by a law enforcement officer. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And that was Officer Garapi. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And when he questioned you, he questioned you and your son together, correct? Yes, sir. No further questions. Okay. We, he did talk to us in individually. He doesn't have any, he doesn't have any other questions. It's okay. Oh. Um, all right, great. Uh, Thank you for coming in today, sir. All right, you're excused. You know, could I have that back, though, that, that one? Thanks. You never actually got admitted. Do you still wish to have it admitted? I do, Your Honor. You read it. Uh, I do, Your Honor. You admit it? I do. State, it's been read. Do you have any objection to it being admitted at this point? Again, Judge, I don't know the relevancy of it. He has not been impeached with it. No he admitted then. that it was his writing. Overruled. I'll admit it for the limited purpose of this bond hearing. Okay. All right. Um, State, who would you like to call as your next witness? Judge, the next witness is going to be probably rather long. Uh, I don't know. Define rather long. Uh, well, it's going to be more. I think you've been trying to take breaks every. I have, and we've now gone minutes or 58 so. minutes, yes. So we're getting close to that time period. It's going to go past the time that you would normally take your break. Let's take a 10-minute recess, That's though. Fine. Although when I say 10 minutes this yes, time, sir. I actually mean at 4.12, we're going to start again, yes, okay? Sir. So until 4.12, we're in recess. All right.
Call your next witness. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Who would you like to call? Your Honor, the state will call Mark Turner. Mark Turner. <coughs> Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. Come on up. Mr. Garcia, you may inquire. Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the court, counsel. Mr. Turner, good afternoon, sir. Mr. Turner, um, you're probably going to have to speak loudly and clearly, and if you can get closer to that microphone, please, so everyone can hear you. Thank you. Can you state your full legal name, please? Mark Douglas Turner. And what is your profession, sir? I'm currently retired. And what type of work did you do? Uh, I've retired from the U.S. Air Force after 27 years and uh, retired from the aviation industry. So, so and what was your rank upon separation from the United States Air Force? A lieutenant colonel. And what were your duties with the United States Air Force? Uh, I was an aviator uh, flying RC-135s, and I was a human intelligence uh, officer and counterintelligence. Um, would you be categorized as a clandestine case officer? Yes. And did you perform most of your work, uh, I believe you said, in, um, was it Japan? China. China, I'm sorry, China. Uh, what were your duties there? Uh, basically to uh, collect and recruit uh, intelligence and agents uh, to work on behalf of the U.S. government. Okay. And, and part of your duties were to obviously ferret out any type of terrorism. Yes. Okay. So you are trained uh, to observe things. Yes. And were you trained in the military to do this or how did you receive your training to become a clandestine case officer? Uh, I received training at uh, federal uh, agencies. Okay. Several federal agencies? Yes. Uh, how many years were you with the United States Air Force? 27. So I would assume in that 27-year career you went to a lot of different agencies. Yes. Is, is that a fair assumption? It is. Okay. Directing your attention to January 13th of 2014, did you have occasion to go to the Cobb Movie Theater here in Pasco County, Florida? I did. Did you go there with your wife? Yes. And what movie were you going to see? Lone Survivor. And do you recall what time it was going to start? About 1.35, if I re remember correctly. Okay. And do you know what time you uh, arrived at the movie theater? We got there about 1.25. Okay. Did you go into the movie theater? Yes. And upon going into the movie theater, were the previews playing? Yes, they were. Okay. And upon arriving there, was uh, Mr. and Mrs. Olson already sitting in the movie theater? Yes, they were. Was Mr. Reeves and his wife likewise sitting in the movie theater? Uh, she was. He was not. Okay. Where did you sit in the movie theater? Uh, we were in the same row as Mr. Reeves at the uh, first seat in that aisle. Okay. So you would have been in the back row, which is row A? Right. And how many seats were you from Mr. Reeves? I would say about uh, five seats, six seats perhaps. Okay. And was your wife closest to Mr. Reeves, or were you closer to Mr. Reeves? Uh, she was closest. I was on the end seat. And so she... you, I'm sorry, you were actually on the aisle seat. That's correct. All right. You said that you saw him coming back into the movie theater. Yes. Did you uh, observe anything unusual about his demeanor when he was coming back? No. He, uh, he was polite. He uh, stepped in front of me and excused himself, and I moved uh, to, uh, to let him pass. Okay. And uh, he walked on by. All right. And did something draw your attention to where Mr. Reeves was sitting and where Mr. Olson was sitting? 
Well, only that uh, I followed him back to his seat just because I got to watch uh, movement as it was going by. And when he got back to his seat, I happened to notice that uh, there was a dialogue going on between himself and Mr. Olson. Okay. And why do you watch movement? Just, uh, just because of my training. It's something that uh, I've done for so many years. It uh, just stays with you. Okay. You do it routinely? Yes. Is it fair to say that you uh, make yourself aware of your surroundings and what's going on at all times? Always, yes. Did you do that on this day? Yes. Were you scanning the movie theater? Were you looking around? I was scanning. Okay. And did you see either a confrontation or a conversation between Mr. Reeves and Mr. Olson? I saw a conversation. Could you see it clearly? Very. Was there anything that was blocking your view? No. No. With was the lighting condition such that you could actually see? I could see Mr. Olson very clearly. Um, I didn't see Mr. Reeves uh, all that clearly once he was set uh, in his seat. All right. Would you tell us in your own words what you observed that day? Um, what, uh, what I saw and heard was Mr. Olson standing uh, at his seat uh, talking to Mr. Reeves, and um, he had said to him, uh, basically, he said, I, do you mind? I've got a voicemail from my babysitter. Uh, I'd like to check to see that my daughter is okay. This um, is Mr. Olson. Mr. Olson. Okay. Did Mr. Reeves respond? Uh, I didn't hear or see him respond. Um, the only thing that uh, I could say from Mr. Olson's demeanor was that whatever was said, something must have been said because his demeanor changed. Objection, Your Honor. Move two strikes. Calls for speculation. Based upon Over, your... Overruled. Second. You may continue. Based upon your observations, you drew a conclusion that his demeanor changed. Yes, it, it was obvious that he did because it was at that point that Mr. Olson threw his popcorn uh, at uh, Mr. Reeves. Okay. Did you at any time see Mr. Olson strike Mr. Reeves? Uh, with? Well, I'm, I'm talking about with the fist, no, the slap. No, absolutely uh, not. A cell phone? No. You never saw that? It didn't happen. Okay. Did you ever see Mr. Olson reach across towards Mr. Reeves? Uh, no. The only thing you saw was a bag of popcorn. A bag of popcorn. What's the next thing that happens? Um, almost immediately, uh, the gun, gun came out, the shot was fired, uh, and it went back uh, into Mr. Reeves' lap, and almost immediately, words were spoken by Mr. Reeves uh, to the effect that said, uh, throw popcorn in my face. You distinctly remember Mr. Reeves saying that? Yes. Let's talk about the motion in drawing the weapon and putting it back. What type of motion was it? It was very fluid, very fast, um, to which you would gather that either he had the gun in his hand at the time or um, it was a practice motion. I mean, it was obvious that it wasn't uh, the average uh, civilian who would be grappling for the gun or trying to get it out of his waistband or what have you. Did you ever see Mr. Reeves get out of his chair? Never. Did he sit in that chair the entire time? Yes. Did you hear any statements from Mr. Olson after being shot? Yes. Uh, once he was shot, uh, he took a step uh, as if to turn towards his wife and he said, I can't believe this. And then at that point, he began to fall backwards. And the um, gentleman that was sitting next to him caught him. And they laid him down in the, uh, in the aisle. And that was the last words that uh, I believe he spoke. Do you see Mr. Reeves in the courtroom today, sir? I do. If you would, please, can you point him out and describe what he's wearing? Here. Uh, in the red uh, 
Best. Your Honor, I'd ask the record to reflect that Mr. Turner has identified the defendant in this case, Mr. Reeves. Mr. Escobar, do you have any objection to the in-court identification? No, Your Honor. Right. Record, Mr. Reflect. You may continue, Mr. Garcia. <clears throat> Did you hear any threats from Mr. Olson to Mr. Reeves? No, sir. May I have a um, moment, Your Honor? You may. Nothing further, Judge. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Mr. Escobar, you may Thank you, Your Honor. Inquire. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Turner. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Turner, what time uh, did you get uh, to the movie theater? Uh, I believe it was about 125. Okay. One and, and you had gone with your wife? Yes. Okay. I, I see you wear glasses. Yes. Is that correct? What is your uh, what is your vision when it's not corrected? Be honest, I, d I don't really recall. When's the last time you've been to a, an eye doctor? Last year. Okay. You just don't know what the vision. I is. just don't. Yeah, I don't recall. Okay. Now, <clears throat> when you when you came into the theater, the trailers were already showing. Is that correct? Right. Okay. And so I would imagine when you came to the theater, it was dark. Um, it was semi-dark. The lights weren't, the house lights weren't all the way down. Okay. And so you were able to get to uh, your seat, correct? Yes. And you were sit seated in the last row, is that correct? Yes. Of the general admission of sec the, section? Of that section, yes. Okay. And so right behind you, there would be a six-foot wall, is that right. correct? Okay. And so when you sit down, you're the first seat from the aisle. That's correct. So... Um, if, uh, if Mr. Reeves was seated, seated in seat number nine, that would be eight from you, correct? Okay, yes. Is that correct? As you sit here today, you really don't know how many seats Mr. Reeves was seated from you, correct? I didn't count them, no. I don't uh, know precisely the seat number that he was in. And those particular seats at the Cobb Theater are quite wide. Are they not? Um, I assume they're an average seat. I don't know. Is that the first time you've been to the cop? No. Nope. <coughs> I mean, a seat is a seat. I don't know how wide they are. Okay. Um, now, the seats in front of you, they recline back, correct? Uh, <coughs> yes, I guess. Okay. So, uh, your wife was closer mm -hmm. to Mr. Reeves than you were. Right. You all were seated side by side. Right. And so you would have to either look around her in order to make some observations, correct? Um, not, not really. Mr. Reeves is seated in that row. Right. And your wife is right next to you. Right. You would have to either look around your wife or over my, your wife, I guess. My wife is in field of view. To so you know, when you go to the meeting in the seat and I'm scanning, I make a field of view for myself. Okay. Tell me why you were scanning that day. I scan every place we go. But why? Because that's what I do. Are you scanning for trouble? I scan to know my surroundings. Okay. It's okay. So you, you sit down, and I would imagine that uh, Mr. Olson was how many seats from you? The same number of seats as Mr. Reeves, only one row down. And in that theater, uh, as you go down in the rows, there's a small uh, downward step. Is that right. correct? That's correct. Okay. And so the seats below you sit a little bit lower than your seat. Yes, sir. And so if you're seated uh, in your first seat there, would Mr. Olson be to your right or to your left? To my left. He'd be to your left? Yes. Okay. And so I would imagine that Mr. Olson and Mr. Reeves were not the only people in the theater. That's correct. Okay. And do you remember anybody else that day there at the theater as you were scanning around? Uh, are you asking me, do I remember anyone in detail? In any detail? Uh, not particularly. I didn't think so. But at that point... Uh, no, no, no. It's sustained. It's not necessary to say that. Yes, now, you you're seated, and I would imagine... You're no. I was uninterested in the trailers at that point. So you're not watching the screen at all? No, sir. Okay. But uh, along with those trailers, there's noise, right? Yes, sir. Uh, okay, yes. Also listening to 
the noise within that theater, correct? Yes. The lights were... Yes. And so you couldn't see clear detail, correct? No, sir. I could see very clearly. So you could see detail? I could see detail. Okay, well tell me what you noticed Mr. Olson wearing. Uh, Mr. Olson was wearing a pair of a light colored shirt. What color? I don't recall the color. Okay. Uh, what about uh, Mr. Reeves? Um, I don't recall what Mr. Reeves was wearing. As I, as I said, um, I didn't pay attention to him as he walked by me. I was sitting down at the time and I just turned to let him by. Uh, and once he sat down, uh, my vision of him was blocked um, by his wife where he was sitting at the time. Okay, well, uh, when he came by you, he was polite, correct? Yes. Wasn't agitated, correct? No, did not seem to be. Was it mumbling anything? No. And it said, sir, excuse me. He as, said, excuse as me, a yes. Nice gentleman. Would. Yes. And he moved to his seat. Yes. Now, Mrs. Reeves was between your wife, who was seated to your left. Yes. And Mr. Reeves, is that correct? That's correct. So the scenario is you in the first seat, your wife in the second seat, and then a series of seats, and then Mrs. Reeves, correct? correct. And then Mr. Reeves. Right. Okay. And so what you're telling me is that when he sat down, you could not see the area around Mr. Reeves because Mrs. Reeves was blocking him. Right. Now, the reason that Mr. Reeves indicated to you that he wanted to excuse himself as he was coming into the aisle is because the people that sit sometimes recline back on those chairs, correct? Objections, Judge. Cause for speculation. No rule on that one. Uh, those, those backs recline. Well, I don't, I wouldn't say that. I think it's because my knees were straight in front of my chair and regardless if they're leaning back or not. Okay. So you're indicating that you observed something going on with Mr. Olson, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Mr. Olson, was he seated or standing up? Standing. He was standing? Standing. So even though you had scanned the theater as you normally do, you had not noticed Mr. Olson until that gentleman stood up. I'm sorry, say again? Even though you had scanned the theater, mm -hmm. When you came in and sat down, as you normally say you did, you hadn't noticed Mr. Olson until he stood up. Mr. Olson. Yes, he was standing. Uh, when I was scanning, he was standing already. Okay. Was that before Mr. Reeves had come back to sit down? Yes. Okay. And so what was he doing standing? He was looking at his phone. So he was standing in the middle of the theater, the trailers were going, and he was looking at his phone, mm -hmm. and Mr. Old, or Mr. Reeves was nowhere in the theater, right. correct? Okay. And so how long did Mr. Olson stand up with his phone in his hand uh, prior to Mr. Reeves ar arriving? It, just a very short time. Oh, um, what, what is a short time? A uh, couple of minutes. Okay, well, let's talk about that. Okay. I would imagine that if he was standing, obviously the, the announcement, put your phones away, have long come because the trailers were playing, correct? Uh, actually, I can't say because from the time that we arrived and sat in our seats, that portion of the uh, video where they normally announce put the phones away uh, to my recollection, had not come across the screen yet. So you don't know so, if it came So I don't, I don't know. Okay. So someone standing up in the middle of a, of a theater while the trailers are going, do you find that to be odd? I, I don't because I do the same thing, uh, mostly because I have a back condition and I stand as long as I can before uh, I'm going to have to sit for long periods. Well, what, what about Miss Reeves that was sitting there trying to watch the trailers? What about her? You think that... Does not object to relevancy? What relevancy does this have? Sustained. Do you have any other questions? Ms. Reeves was still seated as Mr. Olson was standing up, correct? 
Yes. Okay. So you didn't find that to be odd? No, sir. Okay. And so then Mr. Reeves comes in? Yes. Excuses himself? Yeah. Mr. Olson is still standing up? Yes. Mr. Reeves sit down? Mr. Olson is still standing up? That's what you remember? And they're engaged in conversation. Okay. Did Mr. Reeves and Mr. Olson engage in conversation before Mr. Reeves sat down? Not that I can speak to directly. And so now Mr. Olson is still standing up this whole time. Mr. Reeves is now sitting down. And you believe that there is conversation taking place? I'm certain of it. Okay. And why are you certain that conversation is taking place at this point in time? Because I heard it. Okay. Did you hear where the conversation was coming from? From Mr. Olson. From Mr. Olson. Yes. Okay. Now, Mr. Olson is, if, if Mr. Reeves is at, in seat number nine, and Mr. Olson is right in front of him. Yes, sir. That's about eight or nine seats from you, correct? Yes. And you're telling us to hear, uh, to hear under oath today that you uh, could hear Mr. Olson. Yes. And Mr. Olson was saying what at that time? He said, uh, do you mind? I'm checking, or I've got a voicemail from my daughter, or from my daughter's babysitter. Do you mind if I check to see that my daughter's all right? Okay, let's, let's stop there for a second. Okay. <clears throat> the noise of the trailer, mm -hmm. the actual previews, right. uh, are going on at the same time that you're hearing this conversation or this statement. It's a statement, correct? Right. Okay. Uh, did Mr. Olson at that point in time appear to you to be agitated? No, sir. Appear to be calm? Yes. So at, at this point in time, you didn't hear any curse words? No. Nope. You didn't hear any uh, raising of the voice? Nothing. If you would have asked me, I would have thought that it was a conversation between two acquaintances. Okay. Can you tell me at this point in time whether you had yet seen Mrs. Olson? Not that I had paid any attention to, no. Okay, so uh, although you were looking at Mr. Olson, you did not see a female next to him? Uh, no, not that I, I had paid attention to. My, by this time, you know, because he was standing up and I had heard his voice, uh, the, the fact that he had said, do you mind, caught my attention and so drew my, my focus to him uh, more closely at that point. Well, but if he's standing up and his, his wife is right next to him, seated or standing up, you got some peripheral vision, right? Uh, peripheral vision to me is sideways not downwards and she was sitting so, so so definitely at this point in time you didn't see any female standing up i i didn't no. okay okay and so that statement is made what do you hear next the the next i i don't hear uh anything um i personally drew a conclusion. Well, I, I, I know you didn't I, I, I want to know. I didn't hear you, anything. You did not hear anything. Okay. No. How much time lapsed after that statement by Mr. Olson uh, before you hear anything again? Five seconds, 10 seconds max. Okay. And what is Mr. Olson doing during this five seconds and te 10 seconds that you've talked about? He threw his popcorn at Mr. Reeves. Let's talk about that. Uh, had you seen Mr. Olson when, uh, when he was there in the theater prior to him uh, standing up? Did you, had you seen him with popcorn? Uh, no, all, I only saw him as he was standing there with his phone and his popcorn during the um, the time that I described to you. Okay, and so you're saying that Mr. Reeves, excuse me, Mr. Olson was standing up with a phone in which hand? Uh, right hand. Okay, and describe uh, to the court that phone as you remember it. Black. Um, small, not, not as if it was an iPhone, uh, not 
but uh, smaller. I don't recall a you, brand. You're familiar with iPhones, are you not? I am. Okay. And and so you you can recognize an iPhone. Yes. It wasn't an iPhone. I don't believe it was. You're saying it was much smaller. I think so. Okay. And he had that in his right hand? I believe so. And uh, you said he had uh, a container of popcorn? A, a bag of popcorn. Okay. Well, a bag. A bag of popcorn. B-A-G bag. Not a cup, not a box. A, a bag. A bag. A bag. And he had that in his... Left hand. Left hand. Okay. And was he looking at the trailers? Was he looking back at Mr. Reeves? What was his position at that point in time? He was turned at a, an oblique angle. Okay, you tell me when. You tell me when. There's, there's Mr. Reeves. Yes. Here I am. Tell me, tell me when to stop. He's turned at a 45 degree angle to the left from Mr. Reeves. Is that, is that where I'm at? To the opposite side. Oh. Okay, so he is? Just a little bit more to your right. Okay. A little bit more. Okay. About right there. About right here? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and so if you're here, you're able to see the phone and this bag of popcorn. Right. Okay. In his hand. Right. Okay. And so, how long? He's there 10 seconds. What's he doing during that 10 second period? He throws the popcorn and almost immediately the gun comes out and the shot's fired. How does he throw the popcorn? Uh, with the bag, it, not as if it's with the, to empty the, the popcorn, but the whole bag is just thrown. Uh, towards Mr. Reeves. Okay, and so, and he's using your, you're using there your left hand, is that correct? Right, right. Is that the, the hand that you remember uh, Mr. Olson using to throw this bag of popcorn? Yes. Okay, and you, you've made a motion that he threw it from uh, his side at Mr. Reeves? Yes. How big was that bag of popcorn? I would I would have guessed it was a um, a small their small bag. I don't think it was one of the large ones that they sell. You know sell. what color it was? Red and white. And so I would imagine at this point in time you became alarmed. Um, <laughs> I really didn't become alarmed it I didn't have time to think at that point because uh, once that popcorn was thrown uh, almost instantly uh, the shot rang out let's talk a little bit about that <clears throat> in in that period of time that you indicated 10 seconds max mm -hmm. that mr. Olson was standing up with the bag of popcorn in his left hand and his phone in his right hand uh, you're saying he was in front of Mr. Reeves, is that yes. correct? And in movie theaters, uh, especially during the trailers, not only are the lights dimmed down considerably, uh, but the only other light that you have is maybe from the screen itself. Right. And you would agree that if Mr. Olson was standing in front of Mr. Reeves, some of that light from that screen would be obstructed. Okay. Mr. Olson was a pretty big guy, wasn't he? He was. What did you estimate his uh, height to be? I would say he's probably 6'1". Would you be surprised if he was bigger than that? Uh, perhaps, um, you know. <clears throat> So are, are you telling me then that the act of throwing popcorn, well, first of all, wh where did Mr. Olson throw this bag of popcorn? Where, where did he throw it? Yeah, where, where oh, on Mr. Reeves' person are, are you suggesting that he threw he, it? He threw it to the center mass section of uh, Mr. Reeves to his right here. Okay, and, and how could you tell if Mrs. Reeves was there? Well, just from the, his standing position, Mr. Reeves' sitting position, he's only got, you know, this much room. 
uh, of a target to throw it at. So, I mean, where else would he have? So you didn't, you, you didn't see the popcorn actually? I didn't see the popcorn land on him, no. You just saw a, a, a bag fly? I saw a bag thrown uh, in the direction of Mr. Reeves. Did you ever think it was a thermos that was being thrown? No. Or a cup? No. Did you ever have a conversation with your wife where she told you she believed that's what it was? Uh, I did have a conversation with my wife. And she told you she thought it was a thermos? No, she never said that. Any conversations between he and his wife? She never said uh, that. Oh, he's answering it anyway. So she never said that it was a thermos or a cup? No. Did you see your wife speaking to law enforcement in this case concerning what she had seen? I'm sorry, at, at what time? You spoke to law enforcement Did after the incident. The relevancy of this question is, is what to his wife speaking to law enforcement? I'm going to tie it up later on, Your Honor. Uh, move to it quickly. Um, I'll let you ask this question and we'll see where it goes next. You spoke to law enforcement after this incident, correct? Yes, sir. And so did your wife? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, you gave a verbal and a written statement, correct, to law I did, enforcement? Sir. Yes, sir. And so did your wife? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's get back to the incident. Okay. So um, you believe that this bag was thrown somewhere in, uh, in the front of Mr. Reeves' torso, upper yes, torso. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. But you didn't see it land? I did not. And uh, you say that how much time lapsed before the next event occurred? Seconds. Okay. You know how many seconds? Well, and I, I want you to think back to that event. If you can't give me an accurate answer, then tell me you can't. How many seconds do you believe? From the time that the popcorn was thrown to the time that the shot rang out, three to five seconds. Okay. Now, you're telling us that during this entire period of time, this 10 seconds, at no point in time did you see Mrs. Olson holding her husband back, having an actual hold of him and holding him back? No, sir. And you know what she looks like? I do. Right? You see her in court today? Blonde I, hair? I do. You saw her that night there? I did. Okay. And you're telling this court you didn't see any of that whatsoever? No, I did not. Now, <clears throat> you're saying that uh, you heard a, a noise that you believe to have been what? A gunshot. A gunshot. You didn't see the actual firing of the gun? I did. Okay, well, let's, let's, let's take me there. Uh, where did you see that gun the first time you saw it? The first time I saw it was when it was in the hand of Mr. Reeves and he brought it out and fired. Okay. So the first time that you see that gun is not where he retrieves it from, but the first time that you see that gun is once it's already in his hands. Correct? That's right. Okay. And you're saying that the first time that you saw it in his hands, uh, that gun was where in reference to his body? It was here. Okay. You're, you're almost giving me almost like a, a bent elbow. Well, if this, if this helps you out, it's in a firing position. Well, do you know if his elbow was bent or if his elbow was straight? Straight. Okay, so you believe Mr. Reeves' elbow was straight and the gun was in front of him. Right. Could you tell at that point in time what kind of gun it was? No, I could not. And why not? Uh, because it was too far away for me to tell. I mean, the I darkness knew, would not allow you to do that? It means, it, well, it was too far. It was a small gun. I knew it was a small caliber weapon, but I didn't know what. Okay. And so you heard how many shots? One. One shot. Okay. One shot. And so now what happens? The, the gun is very quickly back into uh, his seat or whatever, wherever he put it. You didn't see where, where Mr. Reeves put it? No, and I was standing at that time uh, in my seat, or not in my seat, but I was standing at my seat. Okay. And, um, and I watched him withdraw the, the weapon back. 
but I couldn't tell if he had a holster to his side or if he just put it in the seat next to him or where he actually put it. No, I couldn't tell. Okay. And so you're telling this court that before you heard that shot, you didn't hear any curse words, uh, any loud yelling at all by Mr. Olson? No, absolutely and, and not. Are, you're, are you telling this court as well that as Mr. Olson was standing up, that he was not leaning over his chair towards Mr. Reeves? Uh, what, uh, what I saw was, in fact, Mr. Olson was standing at, at his seat, and in fact, uh, you could say he was leaning over, but not um, in an aggressive manner, as you would, um, as anyone would have a barrier in front of them as you're talking, you might lean forward to, as you're talking. Well, how far was he leaning into that aisle? Uh, just just inches because of the of the seat uh, in there I mean I could stand up and show you but if, if you'd like but it, it wasn't that he was over into the space of the next row well you, I think you've already indicated to me that as you're seated there's not much space between right. your knees right and the backrest of row B correct if I if I were to tell you that Mr. Olson, if he were if he were bent at the waist more than uh, that you heard the gun, Mr. Reeves was excuse me, Mr. Olson was bent towards Mr. Reeves. Uh, slightly, yes. Now, you had uh, an opportunity to be questioned in this case uh, following this incident, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. And you were questioned by a investigator with the Pasco County Sheriff's Office by the name of Sergio Soto, correct? I don't recall his name, but uh, I was questioned by someone. you tell Mr. Soto that you believed that Mr. Olson was irate? I did not. Now, up until the time of the shot, you had not been able to hear any of the conversations that Mr. Reeves was having himself, correct? Correct. Didn't hear him at all. Correct. Throughout the conversation. Correct. Is that correct? It is. But sir. you're telling this court that you could hear Mr. Olson. Yes. And you were relatively the same distance, in fact, probably closer to Mr. Reeves because you were in the same row than you were from Mr. Olson, correct? I would I would say it was about the same. Okay, with the exception very, of the distance forward, yeah, correct? Very, okay. yes. But you couldn't hear anything that Mr. Reeves was saying, but you could certainly hear what Mr. Olson was saying. Yes. And you're telling this court under oath that the only I time... I object to him constantly saying under oath. Everything that's done in this court is under oath. Okay. Why does he have to keep doing that to the witnesses, Judge? I think to have it. It's, uh, it's not a problem. I well know that we're, we're under, well... Well, Judge, I ask that you ask Mr. Escobar to quit doing it, Judge. It, it, he seems like he's trying to intimidate the witness by constantly I saying it's on the road. Mr. Garcia, I don't think that this witness is going to be intimidated by anybody. Um, Judge, but this, this is not the first time. He's done it constantly, over I, and over and over again. I, I understand. It's something we're going to work on. Uh, Mr. Escobar, please don't do that anymore. All right? Back, uh, back to my question. <laughs> Sir, the, the only time you're saying that you heard Mr. Reed was after you heard the shot. Yes. Is that correct? That's correct. And uh, 
you believe that something to the effect of, quote, throw popcorn in my face, will ya? Let's, let's try to examine those words. Did you hear the word throw? That exact word? Yes. Okay. Did you hear the word popcorn? I did. Did you hear the word will? No. I thought it was throw popcorn in my face, will you? No, sir. It was throw popcorn in my face. Oh, it was just throw popcorn in my face. Right. Okay. And you heard every one of those words. I did. Any reason why you heard those and didn't hear the others? Judge, object to the form of the question. What? I'll, I'll rephrase what it, Your Honor. Sustained. I'll sustained. rephrase it. Do you have any other questions, Mr. Escobar? After the firing of the gun, it's quite a bit of commotion, right? Um, actually not. It wasn't? It was not. Uh, actually, it was uh, very, very uh, calm, uh, almost freeze frame like uh, for a, a short period of time. Well, let's, let's talk about this a little bit. The shot rings out, yes. correct? I would imagine your focus is on Mr. Olson, correct? No. It was not. It was so not. you didn't see him come in your direction. I saw Mr. Olson turn out of the corner of my eye, but I, I never took my eye off of Mr. Reeves. Okay, and so you had your eye on Mr. Reeves, but did you see Mr. Olson come in front of you? Uh, Even out the corner of your he eye. He just turned uh, in his aisle. Okay. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. And did he come down, row B? No. He just. Fell right there? He fell right there. Okay, and so right where his seat was is where he fell? He, he tried to take a step where his seat was at. Uh, he made the statement, I can't believe this, and he began to collapse. Right there? Right there. So he, if he was in row eight or nine, at best he got to seven? No. At best he got to seat right next to him. Gotcha. No further questions? Mr. Garcia, do you have any follow-up questions that you wish to ask this witness? No, sir. Okay. Well, thank you for coming in today, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, who would you like to call as your next witness today? You want to stay? We call Alan Hamilton. Alan Hamilton, please. How long do you anticipate for Mr. Hamilton as witness? At least uh, 45 minutes, Judge. You remember that part earlier where you said something about two hours it was going to take him? I'm thinking we're going to go past two hours. How long is? How many more witnesses do you have besides Mr. Hamilton? Uh, Judge, there's Mr. Hamilton, there's Derek Friedhoff, there's Detective Proctor, there's uh, Detective Aaron Smith. All right. Are any of those going to be short in duration witnesses, or are they all going to be approximately 50 witnesses, as 50 minutes as the last two were? Friedhoff should be quicker. No. That's fine. And, and I'm not saying this to attempt to, uh, to rush you or anything. I'm just trying to figure out how late we're going to be here. Because if you've got four more witnesses and each of them are going to be 50 minutes, well, it's going to be a while. Just to clarify with the court judge, when I said two hours, yeah. that was not taken into consideration across the game.